We all know that the joysticks in these controllers are trash and prone to stick drift. But did you know that in 1999, over 20 years ago, this issue was resolved by one of the older gaming consoles? If you're a 90s kid, you may recall something called the Sega's Dreamcast and they use the Hall Effect joystick modules in their controller. You see the modern controllers use potentiometers in their analog stick, which uses electrical resistance to detect movement. You have a resistive track with plastic wipers with a metal casing that rubs against it to measure position and movement of the joystick. Over time, this track will eventually be worn down, which causes stick drift. Anything that makes physical contact with something for an extended period of time will degrade. Let's take brake pads for example. Every time you push the brakes, the pads make contact to the rotors. Eventually, they wear thin due to the contact and resistance. And we will eventually have to change them or something bad might occur. It's the same concept that applies to your potentiometer joystick. Even some of the older generations of the PlayStation used Hall Effect joysticks. That's why you don't recall having stick drift on the older controllers that you used back in the day. So what the heck is a Hall Effect joystick anyways? Well, it's a type of joystick that uses magnets and electrical conductors to measure the movement of the joystick. The key difference is the Hall Effect joysticks don't require any physical contact. And if you don't have physical contact, you don't have to worry about the joystick being worn down and developing stick drift. Even some of the older generations of the PlayStation used Hall Effect joysticks. That's why you don't recall having stick drift on the older controllers that you used back in the day. We all know you can move a magnet with another magnet without making any physical contact. Adding an electrical current, this is pretty much a basic concept of how a Hall Effect joystick could register movement without making any contact. And this is not something new. The Hall Effect term was discovered back in the 1800s by Edwin Herbert Hall and are used in many different applications for sensors, switches, transducers, and many other devices. But the cost for Hall Effect is higher so that explains why mainly most of the gaming consoles nowadays use potentiometer joysticks in their game pads. So we have two joystick cubes here. Here we have the one with the potentiometer and this is the Hall Effect. So if we open them up, so when the joystick moves, it makes this contact here to this carbon track with this metal wiper. So over time, this carbon track could wear out or the wipers wore, wore out. So that causes stick drift. If we open this up, we see here we have a little magnet and this magnet is working with this piece here. So when these are here, there isn't any physical contact, but just the electricity and the magnet working. So I have a controller here with a stick drift. As we can see, this left analog stick is pulling to the left. So we're going to try to see if we could change this analog stick to fix this trick stick drift and replace it with the Hall Effect joystick. Check out this video if you want to see how to open the controller. I made a teardown, so it'll get you to this point. And from here, this is what we're going to do. Okay, let's take the battery out and the battery case. Take out these ribbon cables. So we want to get access to this board, so we want to take everything off first. We'll take this ribbon cable off, this ribbon cable, pull this out, and we're going to open the board. Take the joysticks out, take off the little speaker. So this is the left joystick that we're going to remove, and I'm just going to mark it with a piece of tape to not to confuse it. So let's take this over here, and we're going to just unsolder this board. And before that, I'm just going to clean the tip with a tip thinner. This assures that the tip is going to be nice and fresh. So I find that the best way to rework is to use this SMD removal alloy. So we're going to use this to get this joystick out. So we're going to use some flux paste. So we're going to melt this alloy in each of the pins.
So I have my heat gun at 750 degrees and we're just gonna heat this up. And here with one, I'm gonna clamp this here. Just like that. So now we got the old one out. Now we're just gonna clean the board and try to see if we could replace it with the Hall Effect. Once the board is clean, we can install the new one. Some of the other material I was using is the solder sucker. We have our soldering wick, the tip tinner as I mentioned before. And I'm gonna leave all of these uh, products in the description if you're looking to buy some. So I'm just gonna use this wick here and just go over this one more time. So let's try to put this joystick back in here. Okay, so now we want to align this into the holes. Let's get this out. We want to make sure all of the pins are in the holes. Okay, looks good. So now we could leave it here and start to solder these points. Now when, when we're doing this part, we don't want to put too much solder on here because if any of these points are going to be touching, that's not good. It's not going to work. So that's why we want to use this thin wire. This is how it turned out. So let's see and give it a test. Now we could give this a test. We just need to put the battery in here. And then connect this to the USB-C. So we could see it's uh, pulling a little bit back. So there are these little holes here. So this is up and down. So if we could try to see if we could calibrate it and adjust it. I've heard that other people have done it, that this, that the, these uh, Hall effects are a little bit jittery, which they are here, but the PlayStation should be able to filter that out, so we won't, we won't be able to, no, the PlayStation will not be able to notice that. And we'll give it a test as soon as we get this thing centered. Okay. So, all right, yeah. It looks pretty good. And one more thing here, if we take a piece of magnet in the hall effect, you can see there's a joystick is going to start moving, you see, with the magnet effect. On this one, nothing. So let me put this together and we'll go into a game and just to see if there's any drift left with this. So here's the controller put back together. So the left stick is the one with the hall effect. And if we zoom in, it's steady. So the drift is gone. Even the jittering notion on the joystick, the PS5 filters it. So everything's good to go now. Take care, guys.